Today I'm going to show you how to power up your note taking with just three easy steps that you'll be able to get started with right away. Because when it comes to taking notes, we have a very scattergun approach. We might scribble things down on bits of paper, we might jot things in the margins, we might write something in a notebook, and then we might write something else in another notebook, and sometimes we might jot them down on our phones, we might save things across different platforms. It's a mess. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with choosing those different options so that you can get things out of your head and onto the paper really quick, the problem that starts to arise is that we have to remember where we took that note. Was it this notebook? Or that notebook? Or the one I finished last week? Did I jot it on the back of a receipt which I've now thrown away? And so then we're in the position where we have to spend a lot of time searching for that note. And I just got to a point where I was fed up of doing that. And so this brings me to step number one. Commit to just one location for all of your notes. And that decision is really down to you and your personal choice in note taking. My personal choice would always be digital because I think that it's more searchable. Although I'm sure there are many people that would push back on that if you've ever tried to find a particular email in your inbox. Sort it out, Google. However you choose to do it, pick one and really commit to just that one location. So if you're going digital, this might be one app that you can have across all of your different devices. But another option is to book a regular weekly slot where you move all of your information into that one chosen place. And so then when you need to refind that note that you took, there'll just be one place that you need to go to find it. So now that you've got just one place that you're saving all of your notes into, we need to have a think about how we should organize everything that's being saved there. Now we've all been there. There's a quote that we can kind of half remember or a fact that we can kind of just about remember the detail of that we want to check and find in our notes. And the problem is that we don't know where we saved it. And so when you can't even really remember the substance of that quote or fact, how the hell are you supposed to remember where and when you saved it? And that brings me to step number two, is to shift your organization of your notes to where you will be applying that information. And this shift in organization is setting up your system so that future you will find it more accessible and easy to navigate to the notes that you're looking for. And one of the easiest ways to do this is by starting to use tags. And so tags allow you to organize your information so that it appears in several different locations, making it easier for you to access. But you only ever need to have one master version of that note because these tags act as links or pointers to direct you towards that note. So you don't have to worry about duplicating it or having any trouble with version control. So when you've got a note, and there's a few different topics that future you might come up with to redirect back to that note. You can cover all bases by adding multiple tags. So you just need to save it in one location and then add the tags to it and it will appear in all those other locations too. So whenever you're organizing your notes and wondering where you should save them, just save them in one place and then you can use tags and you'll be able to effectively have saved them in multiple places. And so once you start tagging, you'll start to see that while you get directed to a relevant page of notes, you're then still having to scroll through and find the particular sentence or sentences that are relevant to that topic. And wouldn't it be great if you could just navigate straight to those highlights or those particular bits of info? Well, you can! And you do it by creating atomic notes, which is step three. So scientifically speaking, atoms are the small building blocks that create everything in our universe. But when it comes to notes, what we mean by atomic is one small concept or idea. Ideally in its entirety, um, something on the order of a few words to a couple of sentences in length. Now there's definitely more we could go into about atomic notes. But as a starting point, let's stick with the idea of separating out each idea into its own smaller note. And this takes our whole organizational system to a much more granular level of detail. But it means that you can navigate right to the most relevant and important info. And then just like in step two, how we were tagging notes, you can also tag each of your atomic notes. And so that's the three steps to take your note taking to the next level. Step one, saving everything in just one place. Step two, thinking about how future you will want to apply and use the information in your notes and making use of tags to organize your notes. And three, atomic notes. So you can navigate right to the most relevant bits of info rather than having to spend time scrolling through your long form notes. So let's take a look at my system which makes use of all these three steps. So I've just had my weekly meeting where I transfer all of the info, notes and ideas from across all the different places that I might have stored them into my one location. And my one location is Protolist. 
So let me take you through how I add info in and start to organize it. So everything first ends up in this resources table. And the idea is that anything I decide to keep would then be relocated to a more suitable folder. So each item gets added in as a new row. And then I've also got this quick notes column for me to add any further notes related to that item. And you can see that I don't really make use of that very much. So at the moment, a lot of the notes that I'm taking are for my own personal learning. Okay, so that's step one. I've moved all of my info into one chosen location. Step two and step three, I actually kind of combine just because of the way that ProtoList works. So let's take a closer look at the first one on my list, this YouTube video from Simon Sinek. So if I open this up, so there are different types of pages on ProtoList to help you with organizing your information. Um, this one, because it's a YouTube video, I'm actually gonna choose the web page option um, because that allows me to import the video into my workspace and it generates a transcript of that video automatically for me. So the video has been added into this page and then a transcript is underneath. And so I can watch that YouTube video, I can follow along with the text. As Simon goes through and touches on different topics and ideas, any of those that I think are really important and stand out to me, I can capture as an atomic note in ProtoList. And so as I come across interesting elements, I can highlight them and click this capture atom button. And that lifts that text out of the page and saves it as an atom or relating to step three, saves it as an atomic note. And I can add further thoughts or ideas of my own underneath to expand that note. And in the box above the text that has been captured as an atom or atomic note, I can make use of tags. As much as possible, I try to connect to ones that I have already created because nobody likes to have a convoluted system with lots of tags that essentially really all mean the same thing. So I will generally try to find an existing tag to use before I add a new one. I can carry on taking notes, adding my own thoughts or annotations to those notes and tagging them to make them more accessible across my whole body of notes in this workspace. But if I jump back to my resources table, I can make use of how ProtoList has been built and view my atomic notes. So if I turn the atoms property on, you will see that the atom I just captured just now displays here. So I'll be able to scroll through all of the notes that I have taken. You can see there are some other ones down here that I have. And so all of the atomic notes that I ever take from a particular source are always accessible through using the atoms property on ProtoList. And I really like how this works because if I can part remember that there was something interesting that somebody said about leadership, I have an alternative option to go and find that info because I have tagged it to leadership. I don't have to rely on the fact that I'll remember that it was Simon Sinek's YouTube video. And so that's a little bit of an insight into my personal note-taking system that makes use of those three steps. One location, using tags to connect knowledge to where it will be applied, and atomic notes. And when it comes to building your own systems, take the bits that you like from a few different people, add in your own ideas, and choose a system that allows you to be flexible. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you learned something new. Look forward to seeing you again soon.